Okay. So, <sighs> squeaky chair. So, we've talked about um, our neurons, but so far in our models, we've talked about them like they're just a point. Exactly. And they neurons are not a point. Yes, they have space and dimensions and stuff like That's that. That's correct. So, neurons themselves are, they're very branched, right? Right. So, I'm going to... So, what are those branches called? They're called dendrites. Which means branch in Greek, right? Mm -hmm. So, in fact, if you looked outside, especially in the fall after all the, the leaves come off the trees, that's a very good representation of what neurons actually really look like have this complicated tree-like structure. Now for trees, it does kind of make sense. What are you trying to do if you're a tree with your leaves? Well, you're trying to catch as much light as possible. You're trying so, to maximize your exposure to the light. Which means that for a given volume, you want as much surface as possible, or you're trying to maximize what's called the surface to volume ratio. You see many branch structures, like our capillaries, that do that. What is it that the uh, neurons try to maximize? Um, probably connections to other neurons. Exactly. We haven't talked in detail yet in the course, but everything that's coming in here are synapses, the inputs from other neurons, and there can be upwards of 10,000 connections that one neuron makes to another. Vast numbers of connections. Good. So we have a dendritic tree, mm -hmm. and now, now it's extended. It's not a single point. So what do we need to do to understand how that works? Well, we have to figure out how our signal gets from point A to point B or whatever. Correct. And in many neurons, there's a particular region called the trigger zone where action potentials can be generated. And you have to sum up over time and space all of the inputs that come in, and then that determines whether or not you fire an action potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if that's the case, Let's. why don't we zoom in? Why don't you circle one of those little branches? And let's zoom in and see what it looks like up close and personal. What does it look like? So it would look kind of like a cable. Yes, a cylinder. And now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that we might be able to understand a little bit more easily than something that involves voltages and currents. Let's talk about hoses. OK. So, so like watering a lawn. Or watering a lawn. And watering a lawn is something that a lot of people are used to and they understand. And so that may be a little bit less abstract than talking about voltage and current. But we may end up drawing something just like this and seeing. And it turns out the analogy is actually exact. Okay, so you have a center core that allows water to flow. You have a faucet on one side which generates pressure. And water comes in on one side and flows out on the other side. Now the first question to ask is if the pressure coming in to that part of the hose, P1, let's go PN, that's fine, is the same as the pressure going out, P out. If P1, PN equals P out, then how much water is going to flow through the hose? Well, if PN equals P out, then no water can be flowing. Exactly. What's causing the flow of water is the pressure. Is the pressure. And if they're the same, there's nothing to flow. So, in fact, what we see is then the difference between Pn or Pn minus P out, which we could represent if we want to as delta P right there, yeah, has to be greater than zero mm -hmm. for there to be a flow through the hose. And let's use J for a flow because we like using that for fluxes. So the J through the hose. And where, where is J hose in the picture? That would be like... That's right. It's running along the hose. That has to be due to a difference in pressure. Okay. So, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Now, do we want to draw an analogous uh, neural cable at this point as we start to develop this? We can. It would look... I'm going to get rid of my neuron tree. Okay. Sorry to see that go. But it might be easier to make the parallels if we mm -hmm. have it side by side. We'll make them different colors, how about? I like that. Cables will be the same colors, the flow of things will be different. That's right, because we're in one case we're talking about water, in the other case we're talking about ions moving. Mm -hmm. okay. So if this is our 
our cable. Oh, that's right, that part of the dendritic tree that you blew up. So you have now a voltage Vn. I don't know if yellow is going to show up as well as some we'll of the other. Red. Yeah, red is probably better. Good. So we'll call that Vn, and then we have V out. And now we can ask the question, if Vn minus V out is uh, equal, how much current flow is there? Then there should be no current. Again. Right, so let's represent the current I is the way we usually represent current, and it's flowing along the axon, so why don't we call it uh, axon. Good. And these are just passive properties, These are right? all passive properties. We're not talking about action potentials at all here. We're just talking about how things flow through the passive membrane. Mm -hmm. and very critical. Now, this affects action potentials, but for now, we're not for thinking about that. now we're just thinking about passive. We're just passive stuff. Okay. So if we say Vn minus V out, or delta V, has to be greater than zero, to get a current through. To get I um, axon to be greater than zero. And they're proportional. You can see I axon greater than zero. That the larger the difference in voltages, the larger I axon will be. The larger the difference in pressures, the more water will flow through the hose. Mm -hmm. So this is our first step. So let's generalize our first step. We can okay. say that our delta V mm -hmm. is proportional to our I axon. Excellent. And we can say our delta P is proportional to our J hose. Excellent. Now, because we're interested in, we talked about in work, working with the a hose, you might want to water the garden. And so there you care about holes along the way that provide water flow all the way out, all the way along it. And in that case, you would like them not to get smaller and smaller as things went on. So we're now going to fo focus on flow through the hose, and let's call that J-hole rather than J-hose. Mm -hmm. Let's so draw an arrow going out and call that J-hole. And now in, the, in the, the neuron, the equivalent thing would be what? That would be like a channel. Like right? an ion channel, exactly. And that ion channel would allow currents to flow out through the membrane. And there, what name should we give to that? I okay. sub... M for membrane? Yeah, I membrane. Good. So now we have to ask the following question. Let's go back to the hose. And let's look up close and personal mm -hmm. at that hole. There has to be, okay, so first question is this. Let's say the flow of, along the hose, J hose in, right up before the hole, mm -hmm. is equal to the amount that flows right uh, beyond the hole. It's the same amount that flows beyond the hole. So J hose in, let's just label that, J, J hose in. H comma I. I, okay, and then J H O for out. Mm -hmm. Now, if JHI is equal to JHO, how much flow is there through the hole? None. Exactly. So once again, we have to have J hose in minus J hose out being greater than zero. So JHI minus, minus JHO yeah. greater than zero. Other, and that gives us J hole being greater than zero. Now the compact way to write that is to say delta J is proportional to J hole. Delta J hose is proportional to J, delta J hole. Good. Now, we saw that the only thing that caused a flow was a difference in pressures. Yes. So another way of writing this, right beneath this, is say delta of pressure of pressure, so if we talk about the, the pressure, pressure of from point, let's call that point one and point two, pressure one, pressure two there, P1 and P2, and then P3 and P4. And let's then say it's delta of P1 minus P2, parentheses around that, about the first, mm -hmm. okay, minus P3 minus P4. P4. Now let's rewrite that. That's the same as saying delta outside of delta P, and let's call that 1, because that's where it starts, minus delta P, let's say 3, because that's where it starts, 
And then that could be just written much more compactly as delta squared P. The difference in the difference of pressures around the hole has to be greater than zero for J hole for J hole to be greater than zero, which is the same as saying that delta squared P is proportional to the flow out to the hole. Right? If the the, the, the water flowing in is equal to the water flowing out. There's nothing left to flow out through the hole. Mm -hmm. And since the water flow in is due to a difference of pressures, and the water flow out is due to difference in pressures, there has to be a difference in the difference, difference of pressures. pressures. Now let's go back to the membrane. So if we have I, mm -hmm. in, I? I in, say, I in, in. and I out, and we have the same logic. If the current coming in to where the ion channel is equal to the current coming out along the axon, how much flows out through the ion channel? Nothing. Exactly. So I in minus I out has to be greater than zero for I m to be greater than zero, which we can say more compactly is delta I axon is proportional, proportional to, to I membrane. Mm -hmm. And now, since I axon is proportional to delta V, you can say delta of delta V, 1 minus delta V2. And these are the two different that's voltage right, changes the, That there. gave rise to that, is, which is equal to delta squared V is proportional to I am. So this is a key idea for the for the cable equation that what flows through the membrane is due to a difference in difference in a difference voltages in, in the difference of voltage, voltage just as the flow of the water through the hose the flow out is due to the difference in the difference of pressures around the hole at that point. Mm -hmm. I used to say that in different words. So the differences in pressure that are leading up to the hole and that are after the hole. Right. Um, they have to be different from one another. Yes. Because if the d difference in pressure that gave you JHI was the same as the difference in pressure that gave you JHO, the, those delta P's would subtract and leave zero. And so you wouldn't have any flow and out. And there would be the no hole. flow out. Yeah. So it's the difference of differences in pressure. That's right. Just as it's here, difference in differences in voltage. And so the only complication after this will be to represent the fact that the membrane, so the hose can inflate a little bit and it has a capacitance because it can inflate, and it's got holes in it, which is a resistance. And similarly, the membrane has both a capacitance and a resistance. And so that's what we're going to have to deal with to finish the whole story. Yep, because if we think about our hose, right. as we pour water in, right. if water's only gotten so far, a little puff up a little that's bit. That's the capacitance the of that hose. And that's why hoses are usually pretty stiff, so that you don't blow up most of the hose, you let the water flow. Mm -hmm. Okay? All so right. that's it. That's all we have to say for setting up the analogy.